So this is Android 12 installed on my K20 Pro and if you want to know what are the features that you're gonna get here, keep watching this video till the end and also the instructions to download this and install it on your phone would be in the description below. So make sure you check that out because there are some steps that you have to follow. If you like this video by the end of it, make sure to press that like and if you're new to my channel and if you want to watch these kind of videos, subscribe and be a part of the family. Without wasting any time now, let's start the video. Now this is Pixel 5's GSI Beta 1 for K20 Pro and here you can see the Android version still says S but the easter egg when I'm trying to open it, it's still off Android 11. That's because easter egg of Android 12 is not yet here. But interesting thing to see here is it says your device name as Pixel 5 and if you look here, it's gonna still say the model of your phone is Pixel 5 instead of K20 Pro. So starting with the blotware, this is again a custom ROM so it will literally not even come with more than 10 apps installed which are predefined let alone be any blotware. So in terms of blotware you would not get any application that you would not want and all the applications which are gonna be installed would be basic. Basic as in all the ROM reviews that you will find similar kind of applications are installed in here besides camera. You would not get any camera application installed and why is that? I'm gonna give you the answer for that in the camera section. Now talking about the animation smoothness, don't forget that this is a beta ROM and my expectations from the beta ROM was not as smooth but still surprisingly this is way smoother as compared to all the other ROMs. One of the reasons might be that this is still lighter than all the other ROMs because it does not really have 100% functionalities built into it. But whatever be the case, all the animations that you're gonna see here are gonna be super smooth. For example, look at this wallpaper. The contraction and expansion of the wallpaper whenever you're gonna bring this QR header down is really good. And whenever you're gonna bring this recent menu, you can scroll between them and you'll not feel anything. Despite the display being 16 hertz, it's really nice to see. And then killing all these applications are just gonna be as smooth like being a beta i was expecting it to have a lot of bugs bugs are there not gonna say that it's not there which you're gonna see in the bug section but these animation smoothness are something that's gonna make you stick to this rom and even forget about all the things that it does not even have because the experience is gonna be so smooth and subtle now talking about the customization if you're someone who really likes customizing the phone this ROM might not be giving you a very good experience then because customization is really limited to this ROM because it's still beta and Android S. But all those customization options which I've seen so far are very decent and very minimal. You have this option called back tap on and if you tap here, you can turn it on. So basically what's gonna happen is all those functionalities on double tapping the back of the phone is gonna get added. So you can double tap double on the back Take a screenshot, access your digital assistant, play, pause, media, see recent apps, show notifications or open a specific application that you can select. So whichever application you want by double tapping the back of the phone is gonna be open whenever you double tap the back. Now you can also turn this which will let the phone have a stronger taps in order to avoid the accidental taps. Then you have swipe for notifications. So basically here if you swipe down of your navigation you're gonna see the status bar coming up. This mode has been added because a lot of people are having nowadays big phones and to reach the top of the status bar is becoming a bit difficult. So like this they can do it with one hand and that's gonna help them reach their phone status bar easily. And I think this is something that's really nice. If your phone's comfortable enough so that you can reach the bottom then you can because for me it's still better to reach top than to reach the bottom. But it's a feature, it's still there. Maybe they will kick this out or maybe they will keep it. Who knows? Now looking into other features here, you can customize the system navigations. So basically you can have this gesture one or you can have this typical three button navigation, which I'm not really fond of. So I'm going to keep the gesture navigation here because I don't like that. Then here, if you see power options, you can hold for assistant. So basically trigger the assistant by holding the power button. And I'm going to show you that. Hey Google. And this is Google Assistant of the Pixel devices. So basically the smarter one where you get the one on one conversation going down without having the extra pop up. Now coming to the display option here, if you see the brightness level, so this brightness level bar has 
increased in size a little. I think they are making the UI in this way that it's easy for people to press and hold with one fingers because having thin UIs make it difficult for people to change it and customize it. So that's what I am thinking is happening, which is the reason why these have these big tiles. If you don't want to have these big tiles on Android 12 first beta, you can click on this system UI GX. It's going to disable that and then you can have the top menu and all those menus return back to normal, which is very similar to Android 11. I don't know why you will do that. If you want to have this, I think better to have it the big one rather than having the small one. And that's how you can do it here in terms of customization. That also changes the lock screen, by the way. So if you're into that, but yes, I like that it becomes big and this scaling will be fixed in the final version. One other interesting thing that I don't really see in other ROMs is that these device corners, I'm going to make it look like this. Okay. So these device corners you can see are really adjusted well. So the time is really on the left corner while the battery is on the right corner and they're not leaving spaces on the edge, which I don't really like because I think it's a waste of space that these are not aligned correctly. But on Android 12, it's being fixed and I hope that they keep this layout throughout. That's me. And then in here, you can see colors where you cannot select anything. It's by default natural and it's gonna be natural. Then looking into the battery, there is one really interesting thing here. So the battery stats is showing like this. If you view the 24 hour status, it's gonna show you as a graph, which is pretty normal, right? But here, if you see adaptive preferences in here, you have the adaptive charging. Now this charges steadily over like to preserve the long-term battery life and uses your alarm, which is set on your phone to completely charge by the wake up. So basically for all those people who plug their phone at night before sleeping and wake up with a super warm phone, this feature is gonna reduce the rate of charging at night and it's gonna make sure the moment your alarm rings is the moment that your phone's gonna be a 100% charged. So it's ready to go for you to take it throughout the day and the next day you can put it back at night again. And in the morning, right before the alarm goes off, it's gonna make sure that your phone's 100%. So it's gonna charge your phone slowly, that's gonna increase your battery life apparently. So that's a feature that's built in for Android 12 along with the double tap option of the back integrated into the settings. Now talking about the camera. So initially you would not be getting any camera into the ROM integrated. So what I did was I installed Magisk, which is yes, supported in this room. So basically you have the Android 12 root from Magisk. You can root your phone with the help of Magisk. And once I had that, I installed ANX camera. I also had Google camera from the Play Store which whenever I'm opening is not opening at all and it's keeping on crashing. But if I open ANX camera, all the permissions have been given and it's not really crashing as you can see, but it's not really working either. So basically camera is broken in Android 12. As of now, the beta version, you cannot click any kind of photo. So basically the front camera would not work. The back camera would not work. And even the click photo click option is disabled video. You can't record. So in terms of photography or the camera option, you can forget about it. If you want to do that, don't come to this room. Now let's talk about the gaming mode. So I have Call of Duty installed on my phone. And one interesting thing to show you here is this small icon whenever you open a game. So this is gaming menu and it's integrated as of now. With the help of which you have the option to go YouTube live. So basically stream your gameplay. I'm going to increase the brightness a bit for you to be able to see better. Okay. So here you can enable the FPS, which I'm going to click on. Then you have the screen recording option, which you can turn on and off. You can take enlarge the screens game optimization, which is not really available for this game as of now. And we know why, because it's still beta and you can go live on YouTube and stream your gameplay with this option. Right now it's not enabled as well. You can enable the do not disturb mode. And once you have all these, you can just go directly into your game. And maybe you can stream your game directly from here or you can do whatever you want to do with the help of this gaming menu. Now the FPS counter is here on the side, small menu, which is good. And I think the integration of gaming menu on stock Android would be better because right now it's really available on very few devices and mostly only on ROMs. 
So maybe gamers out there, Android was gonna be bringing you something really interesting for you. Let me quickly show you the settings that the game will be launching on. So graphic is very high, frame rate is maximum. All the enables are enabled. And in here, the BR mode graphic style is set on realistic. So starting the team deathmatch here. On the right hand side, this small green indicator, if you look at this, you'll be able to see the ping here in milliseconds. So that's something which is also integrated in Android 12. So far the performance looks super nice. And I noticed something happening mid game. So the game is sort of freezing now and it's doing weird. The music of the game is also gone completely and looks like it's getting stuck somehow. Okay, I'm back into the game. That was weird. It's still weird. You can see the game is stuttering, but the temperature of the phone is also increasing a lot. So I think there's something wrong with the ROM. It's not really stable enough for the game to start. You can see the gaming experience on this ROM and I don't think you would want to have this sort of experience where the game sort of glitches in between. Initially it was going all fine. The gaming experience itself initially was super nice. All smooth and all. But right now I don't know what happened starting to go really bad so not really playable as of now on android 12 don't get me wrong the performance initially that i saw was super nice like literally nice but right now i don't know what happened right in the center of the game that the performance sort of became worse and now the post gaming experience the phone is really boiling on the back so gaming experience yeah not good don't Flash this room and expect that you'll get much of gaming. I'm not even sure it's going to run Pokemon Go. Now let's talk about the bugs. Android 12 Beta 1 has a lot of bugs. I'm not going to say it doesn't have anything. So the first bug that you'll be seeing is the headphones or the earphones that you're going to connect wired ones would not function with these with this room. So basically it's not going to recognize at all your wired earphones. If you have Bluetooth ones, they would work because Bluetooth is not broken in here. But your wired one would definitely will not be detected at all. So don't think that your earphones are broken. It's the ROM that has that broken feature into it. Now, second bug is the camera. So ROM does not really come pre-installed with any camera. And if you install a camera, it's either going to crash or if it opens, it's going to be completely black. I did find a workaround to use some part of the camera which is through any communication application so like telegram if you open you can select here and then your camera would be working you can click photos and send to your friends or in the group that's gonna work fine but the issue here would be that if you try to turn on the front camera it's gonna freeze out and you will have a black screen so camera wise very limited functionality available basically one camera lens behind and nothing else will work if you haven't joined my telegram group yet and if you have issues or if you want to learn more link will be in the description click on that join the family on telegram the third bug is the absence of fingerprint on this room so if your phone does have an on-screen fingerprint or a button fingerprint it's not gonna matter because that option is not even there so forget about using your fingerprint to unlock the phone that is not there at all now talking about the fourth bug that i saw was whenever you try to open password and accounts the setting force closes well it's very expected that this rom is not yet finalized 
but I'm just letting you know that these are the bugs that you will see. The moment you're gonna click on passwords in an account, you're gonna see your settings vanish and that is another bug. The final bug that I showed was during the gaming test and your game's gonna freeze out at any moment so don't play games that you depend upon and also the phone's temperature is gonna be super high if you're playing games on the phone. So as of now, this build is not meant for gaming. Maybe Candy Crush can work but I'm not sure about that because I don't play. So that wraps up today's video. Let me know in the comment section below which device you are using and I'm gonna see how many of you can have Android 12's developer preview build one. It's so interesting to see how developers are working hard to give us the experience of the latest Android which wouldn't have been possible otherwise. Well, stick to the channel by clicking on subscribe and press on like if you enjoyed watching this video so that you can see even more content in the future and enjoy the latest videos here. Besides these ROM reviews, I also make a lot of interesting tech content. So don't forget to press that bell icon in order to get the notifications for that in the future. This was me, Adam Saurav, and I'll be catching you guys next week with another video. Until then, take care.